Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Joji and welcome here. So in today's video, I am going to show you guys how I created this makeup look. This is actually one of the most requested makeup look that you guys keep commenting on my video and also some of you have messaged me on my Instagram. So if you haven't followed me there yet, make sure that you follow this look is really really exciting because you know when i created my channel i didn't know the feeling of having to actually read some comment people are messaging me because they love how my makeup look my technique and stuff like that it's very very important and i really really value that especially if it's coming from you guys so thank you thank you very much for supporting my channel uh leaving a comment and also messaging me i do really appreciate it and i read every single comment i do reply as soon as i can so yes this is the most requested makeup look overall but at the same time i think this is such a really really pretty makeup for valentine's day that is coming so i hope you guys enjoy and before i start the video i just want to greet all of you a happy valentine's day because it is coming very soon so make sure that you treat yourself enjoy have fun and i hope this tutorial helps you achieve this look as well so without further ado let's go ahead and start the video here you go guys bare face for you let's start this tutorial so first thing that i use as a primer is this one hangover primer from Too Faced. i normally use just one pump for my whole face and I mostly focus more on the t-zone where I have a little bit of dry patches and at the same time oil a lot more oil right there and then just spread it primer is done and now let's move on to the foundation I use the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish foundation so i normally use one pump of this if i want a full coverage foundation that day i noticed that also my skin looks a lot more glowy i think because of the um fix plus that i use on my face but this is the foundation i really really love this if i want kind of like a natural finish but full coverage so really good build up as well so I'm just going to kind of apply this and blend. So that is one pump of foundation on my face right now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Fix Plus and spray my face just like that and then i'm just gonna leave it on because i want the foundation to kind of melt on my skin and just really grip onto that so that i get that like really nice dewy natural look and yeah just funny it in and then i'm just going to add a bit more um, i'm going to add like maybe just half a pump to just really make sure i covered everything because i really like that even application so just like this and then start to build here this way as well you are making sure that your foundation really lasts longer and looks way more natural even though it is a full coverage foundation that is my foundation so far now let's move on to my under eye product or concealer i used the radiant creamy color corrector first and then i applied my concealer so i'm going to do the same thing for you guys and for the corrector i'm in shade light but it really depends on the pigmentation around your eyes so if you have more of a deeper hyperpigmentation or dark circles you might want to adjust the shade that you are going to get i can get away with a light or medium it depends on what i want to achieve that day if i just want more of a natural skin look like but really like perfected or like clean then i'm going for a medium then i just kind of like use a concealer that's really close to my under eye skin or if I want more of a brighter look for today, then I use the light shade as you see. It just help cancels out all of that purple or any hyperpigmentation 
um, dark circles around your eyes. Just like that, it's already good. But of course, we are going to apply the concealer. And for concealer, I use the Can't Stop, Won't Stop um, concealer from NYX. Now, this is something that I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. So when I first review this concealer, because it says it is waterproof and it doesn't smudge with water. So that's what I did when I review at that time. I put water in it and I definitely seen a um, water mark when I tried to spray my face with liquid water, of course. So I didn't like it and I did not give that review or concealer a good review. So then later on, I tried to play a little bit more. So although it says that it's good as a waterproof and it did not work as much as I want, but now thinking about it, like what if I just use it as a regular concealer? Like forget about the waterproof claims that they have. See how it made me feel. So I actually use it and just not thinking like, okay, it's waterproof. But thinking that way and using that way, it actually looks really good. So this concealer made its way to uh, one of my favorite concealers that I've been using lately. And this one, I'm in shade natural. So I really like the shade as well. Um, so I'm just going to apply this. Go like that. And then I had a little bit here and let's do here. So that's how I applied the concealer. Now, let me just leave this on for like at least 10 to 15 seconds before I blend this concealer because that's just the way how the trend right now. Actually, it's been like that. I've been doing my concealer like that just to leave it on, just to kind of like dry it out a little bit, not dry, but kind of like cream a little bit so that when I try to blend it, it's not moving too much. It's been working for me. So if you guys haven't tried it, make sure that you try this method and you'll see the difference between blending it right away and then just leave it on for like 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, so now let's blend this because I did talk quite a bit and I'm sure it's settled already. And then build up, going here. I do my concealer normally if I want a glam look and I really want to have a clean looking under eye, um, I tend to do this. A lot of people actually don't like this method when they drag your concealer all the way to your cheek because they said that you lose a lot more of the natural shadow and natural sculpt of your face. I think, in my opinion, that is true when you just wanted a natural look. I think when you just want like concealer here, just a little bit natural, you know, you don't want a full coverage, you don't want to use contour, bronzer and everything. That is so good, that is so true that you don't want to drag your concealer all the way here because then you're covering or you're losing your feature. But if you're doing a glam makeup look, this is why contour, bronzer and all of that stuff, blush, is invented or it's necessary for a makeup look because that's when you can put or bring the sculpt and the feature of your face so really is highlight and contour that is why highlighting is if you want that specific area to move forward and contour is to move backward so for me um, there's a lot of opinions out there and I really value those one because it gives me a lot of idea it makes sense right so I don't know, that's just my own opinion and I just wanted to let you know guys, maybe just to know me a little bit better. But yes, I've been talking so much so I'm going to set this with a powder now. I will use Laura Mercier powder to set my eyes and the whole face. So I'm going to use my sponge as well just to set it. I'm just going to set it around just like that and like that. And then I'm gonna grab my powder brush. This is from Royal and Langmichel, and this is the powder C101-8. This is such a good powder brush because it's it's huge, it's natural hair, and it's so fluffy, it's really soft on the skin. I'm just gonna dab it like this. So that's how I set my face with a powder. So what I normally do is 
you know, as you notice, I didn't set my face right away after my foundation because I wanted to do all together, like step by step. After complexion, concealer, and then I want to set my powder. Sometimes if the powder already went here and then if you put concealer on top, it changes how the product look like. Powder is done. Now I'm going to move on with my brow. I'm going to do that off cam because it's not as important as the eyeshadow. So I will be right back with the next step. And I'm back with my brow and the next step, the eyeshadow, we are going to get there. But first, I'm going to prep my eyes. It is very, very important when you wanting to do something like this eye makeup look that you really want to be clean and the color just shows up. So this is my primer that I love. This is from MAC. This is the Pro Longwear Paint Pad in Painterly. I'm going to be using the brush from them as well. And this is brush 270S. Just setting this up, although I put concealer there already. I normally do this when I want a certain shade or eyeshadow to pop. So really prep your eyes is the key. So that is all I need. Now I'm going to set it with a powder. I'm just going to use a Laura Mercier translucent powder actually. Most of the time, I don't use any eyeshadow powder or something. But I think I just figure out it's not necessary. So just a translucent powder. Making sure I set it just here. Just like that. Alrighty, so I'm done setting up my makeup. Now let's move on to the eyeshadow. Are you guys ready? I am ready, I'm excited. So for today's eyeshadow, unfortunately, I'm gonna be using a limited edition palette. And this one is from NARS Cosmetics. It's the Claudette Collection. I actually featured this on my favorite makeup from 2021, and this is one of my favorite palettes. I love the formula, and it's actually perfect for Valentine's Day because look how cute the hearts are the packaging is so good any makeup that i really love i actually really take care of them and this one i drop it once as you see this is the color story um i dropped it once and it's really high and it's just removed some of the product i was so nervous and i was so sad but luckily it did not go everywhere and did not shattered so i'm thankful for that it's such a good formula too so yes, it is a limited edition, but I'm going to be showing you a very similar palette to this. First shade that I'm going to use is this one right here in the middle. And also I'm going to give you some swatch later if you wanted to see. But I also have a whole video review on this collection if you want to see that as well. I'm going to put the link on the description down below. So a lot of you guys have commented and messaging me. I have hooded eyes. I want your eyeshadow look. How do you do it? First thing that I do is if I wanted to do more of a dramatic eyeshadow or just overall a glam makeup, I normally start higher than my crease because then you can see the eyeshadow when you put it on. I feel the bone is here. I'm just going to place it a little bit higher and just be careful with the product. Don't put too much and just kind of place it there. I normally start in the middle. I don't start outside i don't start inside i feel like that way i can see how balanced my application is and just be careful how much product you apply on the brush if you have too much product there now you're gonna see the indentation from the eyeshadow the moment you place the product so as you see i place it in the middle and i start going back and forth going back and forth and just keep looking at my eyes and how it's how it's going so far that is how it looks like you will be surprised it's actually looking dark in here but like i said this formula is really buildable and it creates a really nice transition so as you see even i open my eyes i can still see that shadow if i were to place it like here where the bone is when i open my eyes like this you're not gonna see it a lot so that's why i place it here all right as you see i did not dip my brush i just blend the product um really really nice transition very very smooth now uh, let's move on to the next shade i'm gonna be using a different brush this one is from sigma e33 
I will use this one right here that's sort of like orange color just a tiny bit of this picking up and also just dabbing around make sure that you dab the brush and then I'm just gonna put it here sort of right on the crease where you can feel the bone that's where you want to put it and then I'm gonna grab a brush from NYX again blend these two together don't worry because there's nothing on the brush it's just you're trying to make sure it is smooth so that's all I did like actually I use very little of the shade because it's a bit too orange for the look but I did mix a little bit uh, I'm going to move on. I will be using a small brush right here. Got this tapered, really nice brush. And this one is from NARS, number 23. I'm going to pick up this dark shade right here, the darkest shade of the palette. I'm going to start over here. Be careful. You kind of see how much you put on the brush and apply it. Okay, and then I'm gonna go forward just like that so you notice I did not put it from outside because there's a trick to that later I'm going to show you after I apply this okay going to blend with a Sigma E33 again and then picking up the first shade that I apply and just put this on top right here so as you see, I did mix the two colors together already and just building up with the darkest color again. Just a little more and then blending with E33. Perfect, grabbing my NYX brush. Um, nothing additional product, but just Kind of see that already it formed i am really happy with the result so far it's actually really easy guys there's just a technique that i normally do when i do my eyeshadow for a certain eye look or my eye type and that is what i'm going to do next i will finish my other eye and then i'll be right back with the next step already guys done with the other eye and now let's move on to the very important step that i think will really change the way how you do your makeup, especially if you have hooded eyes. So the way how I place it right now with the upper eyeshadow, I actually didn't pull it outside because in our case, our eyes make sure that when you apply your eyeshadow, actually open your eyes and see how your eyeshadow look like. Normally when you're applying your first shade, you open your eyes and see where you're placing your eyeshadow. So that's a very important key when you're applying an eyeshadow to a hooded eyes. Now, if you were to extend the eyeshadow already on the upper part of your eyes, where is it going? Unless you put a tape or something. But that's something that it's so funny to me and it's very sneaky-ish kind of application. I never really try that. If you can believe that, I never tape my eyes because I don't think I need it unless it's a very precise like a magazine modeling look. The next thing that I would do to pull this eyeshadow look outside our eyes to make it a little bit more bigger and elongated, I'm going to grab a very small brush, flat brush as you see right here. So that's how the side and this is the front. And it's more of a rounded one. You can use a square one or a flat on top. Uh, for example, like, like this. You can use that one as well. But I like this brush right here specifically because of the way how it feels. It's very soft on the eyes. This is from MAC number 228 brush. I think this is being discontinued, but I'm not sure. So now I'm going to grab the darkest shade right here with the small brush and just starting to build up. So I'm not going to apply this dark shade on the top. I'm going to start on the bottom of my eyes where I follow the shape of my bottom eye. So that way you're sure that it suits your eyes because you normally follow the line of your eyes here and you also apply it very clean because when you start to apply on the top with a brush 
you know when you start to blend in like it's, it's go anywhere this way it looks very clean so I'm going to just follow whatever is in here and just start treating this as an eyeliner so that's the best analogy I can give you guys if you were to apply an eyeliner do it this way but in eyeshadow so now you can create the guideline that you want. So once you put that there, don't go lower than that. So all you have to do is build up over that line upper. And that's when you can create your kind of like a wing, but make it an eyeshadow. So I'm going to grab the shade in the middle here and fill up whatever in the middle, like here. Of course, you want to be careful applying it. As you see, I'm starting to create that clean line without having to use a tape. Now, I'm going to grab a different brush and clean. Okay, clean, guys. This one is from Shimura 5R. And just start blending whatever I put there. Nothing on the brush. Just blend whatever was there earlier. And just start. So, I'm blending from this shade, guys. Okay. So what I use on the line is the darkest shade and what I use on blending, we apply the transition here. I know it's a little bit too much, but I'm very, very detailed when I try to explain something because this is a requested video. So I want you guys to be able to do it yourself and just the technique overall can help you achieve the look. I am holding my brush really far from the ferrule and really lightweight because you don't want a harsh line there and then as you see different from this side you see here there's nothing i hope you can see it and here there's that like line that i created so you can go as far as you want it depends on how you want your eyes to be more elongated a little bit more bigger i'm just going to Darken the line just a little bit. Be careful. Maybe like that. Maybe that's good for me. I'm going to grab the brush that I use. This is E33. Grabbing this color right again, the lighter shade, the very first shade that I apply. Now you will want to go a little bit darker on this part that we're building because it's kind of like an extra extension of your eye so grabbing the Shimura 5R clean brush just blend the edge very very important if you have hooded eyes you actually need a lot of small brushes because we don't have a lot of space to work with with our eyes so you won't believe how much small brushes I have and they're very very similar actually but I like the idea of having a different brush and it's clean all the time I don't want to be keep using a small brush and I have to like clean it up so as you see there bang on that's how you do your dramatic elongated extra bigger eyes when you have a hooded eyes hope you guys you learned something let me know and let me know what you think about this method on the comment section down below okay guys done with this eye next important step with this eye makeup look so so far what i have done is just to extend this eyeshadow on the top now i'm going to put an eyeshadow under it but the main thing about this to look like this whole thing is all together is you actually go on the very corner of the eyes where you started the line use the same uh, brush and continue that line that you created so make sure there's no gap in there if you have a fold over there just make sure that you fill that up so that it looks like it's all together like one part because this type of technique it's going to give you that illusion that this part of eyeshadow is actually part of your eye so i'm just building up I'm really trying to get in that fold that I have on my eyes. You notice I just kind of like build up here and then I'm going to go thinner on the inner corner of my eyes because you wanted your eyes to be elongated. So when you start trying to apply this, this is another thing. Don't assume that when you apply here, it's just the same 
thickness of eyeshadow that you are applying. No, because then if you do that, all that you did here is just useless because now when you apply the same eyeshadow right here, now you're just making your eyes rounder and then at the end it's like a little wing out. No. So what you do is thicker here and really make sure that this is thinner. Okay? Thinner guys. Like I'm literally showing you how I do it right now and it will pay off. So thin, thin, thin and then a bit thicker on the outside. There it is. So if you are not satisfied with that, just go a little bit more darker and which is I'm going to do right now, just adding a bit more and then add on the top if you want. Just really play with the eyeshadow as long as you know the technique. You can go how dark, how light you want and that is how it looks like. So you notice I haven't applied any shimmery on the part where a lot of people actually does because I just do that at the very end because that's when I can see how far I want to go inner corner and outer because I wanted that like larger and elongated eye. So that is going to be my next step. So we're going to do this eyes and then be right back again. <laughs> Right on to the next step, which is I'm going to apply the metallic shade. So I use this gold shade right here. Very, very nice because it is a very pigmented, but at the same time, it shows color, really good formula. So for this one, I'm going to be using my finger first to apply this because it applies the best. And look how beautiful that is. See, it's a very toned down, very antique kind of like gold. Really, really nice too. So I'm going to apply it right here. As you see that. Just amazing. Okay, and then I will be using a brush. So for that one, I will use the Sigma. This is the E25. Blend this eyeshadow just carefully. And then as you notice, I applied the gold shade very high because I wanted to see that. And then bring it all the way in and just use whatever you have it there already to bring the shimmer into the inner corner. I tend to apply my shimmer eyeshadow closer to inside, like almost here, because it helps the eye to look like larger. Um, and then building up again, very, very nice. Actually, let me use my finger again. I feel like, yeah, finger that shows way more pigment. I wouldn't say this as metallic. I would say it's more of a satin. Actually, today is a really cloudy day. It's raining and there's no sun. So it's all about light, right? So if you were to wear this on a sunny day and it's brighter it will also look different so i'm going to just blend this and build and that's how it looks like as you see the shimmer went all the way here of course because it's just all about the trick right tips and tricks you got it here guys and I hope you learned something i will be finishing the other eye and then the rest of the makeup when i'm back all right, you guys, here is the eye makeup look, and I did put the false lashes already. I used the Velour Mink Lashes. It's the Serendipity. It's the one that is actually longer on the end and shorter on the front because you wanted your eyes to be more elongated. As you see, it's very, very complementing to the eye makeup that uh, we did already. So now let's put the rest of the makeup that you saw on my makeup look. So I used the bronzer. I actually didn't do a contour because most of the time, if I have a dramatic eyes, I don't put the contour. So I use a Laguna bronzer from NARS. So I'm going to be using that today as well. And I use the brush from NARS as well. So I'm just going to try to put this one just like that. Very simple. And over here and then start to blend. Just to give the cheek a little bit more sculpt. And shadowing because we did conceal that 
quite a bit and also I adjusted my light I feel like it's getting darker and darker it's really bad out there and I want you guys to see every detail so I did change the setting a little bit but let me know if it's too bright or something next time so that I kind of know what setting I should go if especially if this is most of the day is gonna be like this bronzer over here as well just a little bit more warm I'm not really gonna go a lot so very very simple I just did that way I think most of you guys are more interested to the eye makeup look which is I already did and I also actually apply a um, mascara already on the bottom of my eyes I use the Clinique Lash Power Mascara um, now it's time for the blush. One that I have been loving long before I did this YouTube channel. I always, always use this, especially when I try to do a dramatic look. This one is from Clinique. Uh, Sculptionary Cheek Contouring Palette in Defining Nudes. This is how it looks like. Oh my god. I have this blush for like so long now. I don't know can't remember. I love this blush, especially when it's like this kind of eyeshadow. It's just a nude one, but it gives you a color very complementing to a lot of makeup that you're going to do. As you see that, very nice. And then I'm going to do this side. And I did not bring my blush in the front. I normally focus just here, the side, almost like on my cheekbone, and just try to build this up. And the way how I actually applied this blush, I just grab, you know, all of them, three of them together, just kind of mix it in. And there you go. That's how the blush looked like. And of course, the lipstick was one of that color that it really defined the makeup. Although that lipstick shade was very, very natural for my lips. So this is what I use. I use the Clinique Creamy Nude. This is the Long Last Lipstick. Actually, this is one of their very old formula. I still have them because these are my favorite formula. I can't remember if they still have the shade. I will double check with you guys. But if you really like the shade as well, you can go ahead and pick it up. It might be a different formula already. So let me apply this. You see how... Oh, uh, complimenting this mm, makeup, this lipstick, I mean. So there it is, guys. The Lipstick Creamy Nude from Clinique. Really, really nice formula. It looks like I have gloss uh, that I'm wearing, but actually not because of the formula. And that's how it looks like. And then last but not the least is the highlighter. Uh, I use the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess. I really love this one. It's a golden tone highlighter. So what I did is I just apply a little bit of this shade in the corner of my eyes just to get that elongated extra um, eye openings. Actually spray it with a Fix plus and then apply it. So I really packed and make sure that the highlighter is visible because that's what it makes it more prettier and then I'm going to add just a little bit on my brow. There is an ambulance if you can hear. But this time I'm not going to stop my video because we are almost there and I hope you guys don't mind that. I live in a busy street so most of the time there is an ambulance. And that is it. And then I'm just going to do a little bit on my nose and on the lips. And then last but not the least, I'm going to do it on my cheek. You know, if you're going out for a night, then just go for it. And there you go, guys. The most requested makeup look that you guys have been waiting for. I hope you enjoy and I hope you learn. Let me just put my hair down. I don't want to do too much with my hair. I just want to stay straight. So I think 
that's pretty much it like i hope you guys really learned from this and if you did please leave a comment down below if it's still not clear for you guys let me know you can always message me as you do leave a comment on the section down below so a lot of people actually reached out to me on my instagram account so if you haven't followed me there yet make sure to follow me i post lifestyle ootd and kind of a makeup that i review here on my youtube and makeup look as well so make sure to follow me there i'm gonna put the account on the screen right now so you guys exactly know what to follow i go by the pretty wolf as well after the makeup look i'm going to show you guys the very similar palette that i have that i know is very close if you know something else that it's really close to this one um leave a comment down below so if other people actually are interested to this kind of makeup or the color story they can also look for that specific eyeshadow that you you know that's similar to this but for now i have a very similar which is from anastasia it's their modern renaissance palette so as you see right here the color story is very similar i'm going to put them side by side yeah so as you see most of them are very similar so if you wanted the darkest shade i would say use this one here and mix it with a little bit of red ochre to get this mauve plumish color the primavera is your gold and then the lighter shade is red, red ochre mix it with a little bit of brown because it is a limited edition i think you cannot get it anymore but if you can then you're lucky so that is it from me today guys thank you so much for asking this video thank you so much for commenting on my video if you like it if you enjoy it please give it a big thumbs up also don't forget to be part of my growing family i'm very happy being here guys so thank you thank you so much again for all your support and i will see you on my next video bye guys